How's it going you guys? Welcome back to the channel and today's the big day that we finish up the cooling system on the CUDA. So uh, real quick, like I said earlier, I did clean up a bunch of stuff. I actually went to the hardware store earlier and I bought a bunch of hardware needed for uh, just bolts and things. I got a bunch of stainless steel stuff so it doesn't like, you know, corrode over time. I did get a bit more coolant and also right now I'm going to do something that I should probably get done before I put any fluid in this. As you guys know, um, I'm putting a different gauges in the car, so it's going to need a different kind of temp sensor. So I might as well do that now since there's no fluid or coolant in the vehicle and it'll be a lot easier to do now. So we're going to do that first and then I'll continue with the rest of the, the cooling system. Okay, so here's the temp sensor that uh, went to the original gauges. I'm going to remove this and replace it with this sensor right here. Now this is the new one that will go right in place of the old one. And I'm going to leave the original wire hanging out just here. And that's not going to affect anything. And I'm going to run in a similar fashion the new wire for the new sensors. It'll just pretty much keep it from, if I ever want to go back to the old school stuff, I could just have it right here ready for me. Besides, it won't bother anything and it'll be all right. So, okay, we'll go from there. Okay, so the old sensor is out. Here's the new sensor with some Teflon tape for a good sealing measure. And... Uh, in this bad boy go, so let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, one more thing before we move on. So back onto this water pump here, I did have to do a few things. Um, the aluminum water pump has different spouts here. So these are actually built in to the water pump itself. These two right here, this one's for the heater uh, return and this one, or sorry, the heater out. And this one's for the um, bypass to the intake manifold. And on the aluminum one, uh, they're molded in to the actual housing. These you have to uh, swap out from another pump. I'm not sure why. Uh, must have been something left over from the old school days. But anyway, um, I already swapped out the fitting for the heater and the fitting for the bypass. And now that this is ready to go in, um, let's go ahead and mount it. Alright guys, so the pump is in, um, all the hoses have been attached except for the top one. Now the reason I haven't attached the top one is I want to go ahead and put the fan in before the uh, top hose goes in. It'll make my life a lot easier and uh, yeah, so let's continue. All right, so all I need to do now is reattach these wires to the fan relay. Um, all the hoses are set now. I'm gonna let this dry, uh, the silicone and the little bits that I left in there uh, for, uh, I wanna say a couple of hours, maybe have some lunch or something. Uh, just, just let this thing dry, reconnect these, and in a couple hours I'll fill it up with the liquid it needs and check for leaks. But I think we're, we're good here. And also I'm replacing the cap with one of these. Now these caps right here are good for keeping the pressure sealed into the radiator and this little bypass lever is going to let me um, bleed out any air that I need to and it'll just help with the, the process. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get that done. All right guys, so today is the next day. I actually let this thing sit for overnight just to make sure everything's dry, nothing's leaking. There is fluid in it now, so I'm literally just checking for leaks. But in a second here, we'll get this thing started, see if it'll overheat. Hopefully it won't, but primarily I'm trying to get air bubbles out of the system. So you don't want any air bubbles when it comes to cooling systems. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good. So let's check this out. Make sure, that, uh, let's give it a good look over. Make sure there's no leaks coming from anywhere and cool, we'll test it. All right. All right, so you can see here, everything's hooked in. Nothing seems to be leaking so far. Like I said, I left it overnight. Fluid's still full. And yeah, there doesn't seem to be any leaks, so I think we're doing pretty good. Sweet, let's get it done. All right, testing the new cooling system. Let's see how this goes. 
So I made sure it's all full of water, uh, well, coolant and antifreeze. Don't ever put regular tap water in these things or you're gonna basically rust everything. Or, or uh, best case scenario, you just clog it all up, which is not a best case scenario. But um, I think it's working so far. I've let it idle for quite a while now. I made sure all the air bubbles were out of the cooling system and it's stuck at 190 degrees, which is really cool. And that's idling standing still in gear which isn't bad at all however uh, I haven't driven it much yet so let's see how it does because obviously as I drive it should you know the temperature should come down so we're gonna test that right now let me just get out of this area responds good I haven't driven in about a month so drives really really good all right let's hope this thing doesn't leave me somewhere <laughs> that would suck she's driving nice the, uh, the temperature fluctuates between 187 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That's perfect, that's beautiful. And it seems to stay there as I idle, as I'm just standing here in gear idling at a light. Not bad, not bad at all. I think it was a success, guys. Really good success. All right, so we're sitting idle. I've been here for about three minutes. It's sitting at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, fan's working good. If you see me sweating a little bit, it's a little warm out here. It's about 85, maybe 90 degrees. Not super bad, just warm. Not bad. Let's see how we do. And if it is a little bouncy, guys, I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of potholes in California roads. Thanks, California. Let's see here. Let's go. Let's drive around a little bit, right? Let's see. Let's see how she does. Let's let's make sure that we're good, cause I honestly don't want to go through that again. So let's see how it does. So far, so good. All right, let's go for a little bit of a cruise, and then bring it back down to uh, idle and see what it does. 187. Beautiful exactly where these things want to be now not a lot of guys want to keep them at 160 degrees you know the problem is engines start running very inefficiently at that point I do have fuel injection so might as well take advantage of it right I mean get a little economy out of this thing <laughs> not like it was designed for that but still do what I can uh, a little bit I want to pull over to check make sure it's not got air in the system or it's not leaking anywhere but I think we're okay yeah I think we're a success guys all right I'm happy Right. Let's see if we can't give it the beans, huh? <laughs> yeah! All right. Woo! Yeah! All right, that thing did it. That was good. This thing is tuned, baby. Very much so. All right. Well, that worked out nicely. I'm very happy about that. So I'd say we head back to the ranch. See how we did. See if this thing needs any more water. Uh, see if it needs any more fluids. We should be good. All right, so we're back at the house and uh, it looks like everything went well. I just relieved some pressure. As you can see this bypass right here. So let's take a look at it. You see this the bypass that I bought here? So this is letting me release the pressure so that I can check whether or not it needs uh, more coolant. And all I saw was pressure coming out of there, meaning there was still air in here. So I'm going to refill this with coolant to make sure it's all full. But even then, it's still cooled off really nicely. So we're on the right track, guys. All right, I think it's a success. I think we did pretty good. All right, sweet. So that pretty much does it for this. I'll give you guys an update on how this thing drives, but pretty much that takes care of it. Just be releasing some of this uh, air. As I go, obviously there might be some more air trapped in the engine that happens, but uh, you just pretty much keep aware of that and make sure that your reservoir is full of coolant down here. And uh, yeah, that pretty much does it. But yeah, one other thing. Um, a lot of you guys were asking about part numbers and what uh, I use, what things I use and all that stuff. All that stuff will be linked in the description below. Uh, the, the part number for the uh, radiator, the uh, water pump and the uh, fan all be in there. 
Um, all, all of that stuff's gonna be in there. So yeah, if you guys wanna look at that, there'll be links in the description. And um, I was not sponsored by any of these people, okay? So nothing that I used today or that I used in this vehicle is, is a sponsorship of any kind. So it's all on my own dime, but you do what you have to do, right? All right, see you guys next time. And as usual, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, and yeah, man, I'll see you guys next time. So let me know what you think. See you in the comments below.